Welcome to MA3D1, the Warwick Maths module on fluid dynamics. This video is about the conservation of mass. In, a, in an earlier video uh, on the conservation laws in continuum mechanics, we derived a general conservation law for a quantity capital B with density little b. Uh, the quantity had a volumetric source given by Q subscript B and a surface exchange rate on any Lagrangian boundary with a neighboring volume denoted T superscript B. And using the volumetric and the surface exchange ra rate, we derived many different forms of uh, the conservation law. I have written two of them here. The first equation is the conservation law written in integral form and the second one is the same law written in differential form. In this video, we are going to apply this theory to a special case, the case of the quantity B being equal to the mass of the fluid. This serves two purposes. One is uh, conservation of mass is a fundamental law of physics, so we will learn about the consequence of a fundamental law of physics. And second, it will also be a good test case for the application of the general conservation law because mass is one of those quantities which has trivial volumetric and surface exchange rates. In this sense, uh, that the volumetric generation of rate, a volumetric generation rate of mass is identically zero because mass can neither be generated nor be destroyed anywhere in the fluid. And similarly, because of our use of a Lagrangian volume omega, the boundaries of this volume move with the flow, they are Lagrangian uh, boundaries. And therefore, no net exchange of mass happens on this Lagrangian boundary by definition of a Lagrangian boundary and therefore the surface exchange rate is also zero. So we are going to substitute the, this in these equations and also in other forms of these equations like the integral uh, form has uh, multiple versions and we are going to derive them and then we are also going to look at the a physical interpretation and perhaps development of some intuition for the various terms in these equations. Okay. Let's start with the conservative Lagrangian form in integral representation of the conservation of mass. Because the volumetric sources are zero, all it says is that the Lagrangian rate of change of the total mass inside a volume omega, a Lagrangian volume omega, is zero, implying that the total mass inside that volume written as integral rho d omega is a constant as a function of time. This is our um, conventional understanding of conservation of law, uh, conservation of mass, and that's how it bears out in this case. There are other representations. The, the, the conservative Lagrangian representation is complicated by the fact that you have to track your volume as a function of time to flow to go with the flow. The conservative Eulerian form, which is the one that we will discuss next, does not require us to do that and that is one of its advantages. It says that the rate of change of density within a, a volume omega, in this case it does not matter whether it's a Lagrangian or an Eulerian volume because we are not uh, there is no time derivative outside this integral. The time derivative is inside the integral. So therefore, in this case, the first term represents the time rate of change of mass within a fixed volume, a volume that isn't moving with the flow. And therefore, this is an Eulerian expression. Now that plus this term that you get from applying the Reynolds transport theorem 
add up to zero. Now let's try and understand the interpretation of this term. All right. So you can imagine uj being the velocity, density times the velocity, rho times u, is the rate at which mass is carried by the flow. Rho is the density of mass, u is a volumetric flux, and therefore rho times u is a flux uh, is the convective flux of mass. If you dot this with the unit normal, which is written in index notation there or in vector notation there, what you find is the mass crossing a unit surface with normal n, or the rate at which mass crosses a surface with normal n per unit area of the surface. And therefore, this expression, this surface integral as it is written, represents the total mass, the rate at which mass is crossing the boundary of this volume. And as you can imagine, the two terms then represent the rate of accumulation of mass That's the first term. And the second term is the rate at which, the net rate at which mass is leaving the surface. And these two terms must add up to zero. That's the law uh, of conservation of mass in an oil, conservative Eulerian form. It's also customary at this point to discuss the possibility of applying divergence theorem to the second term. Uh, and when you do that, you get a third version of the same uh, conservation law, uh, which is written here. The reason you derive this form is because it gives you an interpretation of the differential form, which we are going to discuss next. The differential form is simply that the integrand has to vanish everywhere, because this integral vanishes for every volume omega. So let's now look at the differential forms. The conservative version of the differential form is starting from the version that I just mentioned that you can derive from the integral form is written there. And uh, you will notice that the two terms that come in this form are one is the rate of accumulation of mass because of the rate at which density increases. And the second term came from the rate of depletion of mass by the flow. And uh, in the integral form, it was for a whole volume. But now because um, we have this d omega, which we have not written in the differential form, the interpretation of this term is the rate of depletion of mass by the flow per unit volume of an infinitesimal volume. All right. So therefore, the two terms can be interpreted as if you consider an infinitesimal volume, the rate at which density is increasing in that infinitesimal volume. And the reason the density is increasing, uh, the increase of density is balanced and must be balanced by a rate of depletion of mass by the flow. The two must add up to zero. To see the same sort of interpretation in the Lagrangian uh, description, we have to rewrite this equation slightly. And I've done that on the side here. This is a simple exercise in uh, tensor calculus, in differential tensor calculus. You can expand this divergence into two terms. And you should do that. Uh, take a moment to do that. And then this equation can be written as uh, I have written here in gray. You recognize the first two terms of this equation are nothing but the material derivative. This is the rate of change of density following the Lagrangian uh, fluid particle. And therefore, the law of conservation of mass now can be written in this form, which I have divided by the density and taken, taken the, the second term on the right hand side to write it in this form. So what it says, the relative rate of change of density of a Lagrangian particle is given by the divergence of the velocity field. Now, if you go back into uh, the video on uh, deformation of an infinitesimal fluid particle, you'll recognize that we had given this quantity, the divergence of velocity, a physical significance. 
it was equal to the rate of change of volume per unit volume of an infinitesimal fluid volume <laughs> follow Lagrangian fluid volume all right uh, so equating the two and now let's equate the far left hand side with the far right hand side and take it bring the two terms together this equation now has the form of d d t of rho v equals zero and that is indeed our statement we come back to the statement of conservation of mass rho times v density times volume gives you the mass within that infinitesimal volume and following the Lagrangian uh, description where we follow the fluid particle in the Lagrangian description the rate of change of mass within that volume is zero therefore that infinite symbol volume contains a constant amount of mass. This brings us to the last topic of this video which is the definition of an incompressible fluid. An incompressible fluid is a fluid which has a constant density so one can think of it as a fluid for which the density of Lagrangian fluid particles does not change with time. So this is a subtle difference between a fluid that has a constant density and a fluid which has a variable density but every fluid particle moves in such a way that its density does not change. Both these possibilities are considered within uh, the same uh, definition of an incompressible fluid. This, the latter is called an incompressible flow. When a fluid has a constant density to begin with, it's called an incompressible fluid. Or when the flow occurs in such a way that the density of Lagrangian particles does not change, then it is called an incompressible flow. Even if the density is different at different points. The condition for both of these is equivalent that the velocity be divergence free. So this is the condition for a flow to be incompressible uh, or a fluid to be incompressible. We are going to use this condition a lot in the coming uh, lectures, in the coming, uh, in the rest of this module because we will exclusively deal with incompressible fluids and incompressible flows. This ends the video on the law of conservation of mass. I will see you in the next video, whether it be one that is pre-recorded or in a live session.